hashtag entrepreneurship tuesday right here on why in the morning at y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms at michelle ashira is where you can reach out to me remember we have a question on our facebook page it's all about that conning story i want to hear your conning story if it happened in business well and good i just want to hear that story so share uh, your stories at y254 channel that's our facebook page so in this particular session we're getting into an interview and it's all matter pertaining uh, energy optimization in business and in studio i am with dennis karaoke who is the founder of creos holding limited uh, thank you very much dennis for creating time to be with us thank you for hosting me all right uh, uh you look dashing thank you <laughs> likewise <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, uh, before even getting into matters pertaining uh, um, energy optimization in business, mm -hmm. I would like to find out just a little bit of a background of who Dennis Karaoke is. Okay. Um, Dennis Karaoke is an enthusiastic human being. All right. I uh, was born in Kikuyu constituency mm -hmm. in a ward called Sigona. I am... Um, my parents are environmentalists, so somehow they had an influence on uh, my career path. Um, I am a mechanical engineer by training. You I, don't say. Yes. And <laughs> uh -huh. graduated from the univers uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology mm -hmm. in 2015. Yeah. So I am also a registered uh, graduate engineer with the Engineers Board of Kenya and a certified energy manager. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed you mentioned something about your parents having mm -hmm. an influence in <coughs> you uh, getting into this particular energy industry that you're in right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But when did you discover that you're actually passionate about this and it's something that you can pursue? So it was um, during my third year of study. And uh, that's when you start specializing in some units. And I have found that I had a lot of interest in some of the units, mainly um, energy management and renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So. By the time I was getting into my final year, I had known that, that I had actually decided that my career is going to be on energy. So with that particular influence, now in retrospect, reflecting back, I realized that a lot of my upbringing had a lot of influence on my career choice. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, told which course to do. I had a lot of uh, uh, freedom to make my decision. But in retrospect, considering that my parents are in, 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 in environment, the kind of primary school I went to, we planted a lot of trees, like environmental protection was indoctrinated in me mm -hmm. uh, from a very young age. So by the time that I'm choosing that career, I felt like it was a call. Yeah, uh, it's only that by that time, that's when I was hearing the voice. I didn't hear it as a child. Oh, what type of a student were you in high school? What type Consider of student? Yeah, cons <laughs> considering you say like your, your parents, it felt like your parents were growing up and you've actually mentioned it, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. They give you that space where you can uh, make decisions mm -hmm. and make your own mind. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I went to a seminary actually. And joining the seminary, you would always, everybody would think that you're going to become a priest. But it's, it's that background of the seminary that really help me hone on um, what I'd want to be in my life afterwards. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of career guidance uh, I, back at high school, um, the kind of mentors that we had, uh, the relationships that we formed back then, still till date, we still have such bonds with most of my classmates back from high school and schoolmates. So I would say that back, back, back in high school, I was just an ordinary guy. Uh, nice. Yeah, um, I hadn't known that things were going to turn out the way they did afterwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the decisions about even the choices that I made in terms of uh, higher education were very guided mm -hmm. by my teachers and uh, my relatives. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What would you say there were like top three principles that you gathered while still in the seminary school that actually it had? Uh, it played a role in shaping you into uh, the business person you are today. Mm, I would say the motto, <laughs> the school motto, which I've never forgotten. Which was? Excellence in mind and spirit. So the, the main value of, of, of that particular motto was, since it's a seminary, uh, we all understand that um, matter spirituality are very focal. But at the same time, it's also a school. So you need to learn. So 
I realized that the balance between the mind and the spirit basically uh, makes your, the, let's say, the whole body stable. Um, this is in regards to if your mind is stable and your spirit is stable, things like uh, bad health, um, issues with your body, they are going to be there. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Interesting. So, right. yeah, um, I would just say that. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you turn out to be a priest? <laughs> <laughs> we should get that as a story for another yes, day, right? So yes. You worked as an energy audit and an energy manager for five years. Yes. So what led you to resigning, just issuing out your resignation and go on to, to the world and start something of your own into the, uh, from the, ener into the energy industry, that is? Um, <clears throat> it's a good question, Michelle. Uh, for me, it was... The, the, the gap that we had ident identified in the industry back then. So there was a law that had been formulated back in 2012 that necessitated uh, industries that consume around uh, 180,000 units per year to conduct that energy audit every three years. So the first cycle of the first three years was in 2015 and there was a huge rush for complying to that law. But when, when organizations were taking up these services, they were not following through. They were not following through with whatever was recommended in these reports. So we found out that probably it's because um, the reports are too technical to understand, mm -hmm. there's, there's need for guidance and all that. So that's when we decided, okay, um, let's address that gap. Let's not just be uh, energy auditors, let's also help them implement these recommendations and so that they can realize the savings that were recommended from the, from the audit. Okay, yeah. right. Um, when you moved, mm -hmm. okay, now you have the confidence to start something of your mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Did you have savings prior or how did you raise your initial capital? Uh, I did not have any savings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I considered a service, service, service business is basically you selling yourself. Absolutely. So it's not you are the product. So if, if you know that you are value, then people are going to pay for that value. So it started as consultancy. Um, and it was, it was kind of a very, let me not say a smooth transition. Because mm -hmm. uh, it had taken a, a very long time for me to get my first client, like almost like six months. Okay. Yeah. So. It was not until I got my first client that I realized this can actually happen. Mm -hmm. So I think in business you either trade your time or your money. For me, I traded my time, okay. yeah, because I did not have the money back then. All right, yeah. you spoke about something which is very important, that it was quite, uh, it took time mm -hmm. for you to get your uh, f first client. Mm -hmm. How did you go about that and how did you get your, you know, your first client? Mm -hmm. and? Uh, the process of networking okay. in the energy industry, yeah. It's good you've asked that, because um, that, that word networking, I think, was the most valuable thing uh, for me starting out. So in the course of employment, you meet so many people. You meet managers, you meet technicians, and these are the people that we deal with in day-to-day -day business. So sometimes when they change organizations, they're always looking for you. Like, um, we, did, we did such a... Uh, a process in the former organization, now I'm in this new organization, can you come and help us out? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm happy to do that. In fact, I started my own venture. Mm -hmm. So they'll be like, ah, oh, okay, that's nice. So when we meet up, um, basically it's, it's just through the referral of one person knowing another person, like that, like that. Okay, yeah. apart from uh, struggling mm -hmm. <laughs> to get your first clients uh, initially, what are some of the uh, challenges that you faced during the probably first year of starting your own business? Mm, my first year of business was basically trying to come up with a team. Because okay. since, since this business is governed in law, there's a lot of compliance issues. There are people who cannot um, do the kind of work that I do. And if, and if they do it, um, it's not going to come out professionally uh, as compared to, say, somebody who doesn't have the necessary or the requisite compliance uh, certificates. These are basically licensed from the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. So since I did not have that license back then, um, I would look for collaborators. So 
And these collaborators included maybe the licensed auditors, uh, some licensed technicians and all that. And sometimes it would eat into the margins. So we hadn't gotten into, we hadn't really learned our business model very well mm -hmm. back then. So sometimes, you know, <coughs> there's a difference between uh, making money and running a business. Okay. For us, it was about making money. But as we proceeded, now we started learning that um, we should now run a business. Yes, it should have uh, such functionalities, HR, um, finance, it should, it should always be kept in, on record. Um, should be all structured. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, but that, that came later yeah. and we had no prior background in business, like even, even small, small households, but this, this particular um, opportunity of running our, our company as Creos Holdings, we decided that we need, we need to have this structure in place okay. if we want to grow the business mm -hmm. the way we envision it, mm -hmm. five years, ten years from now. Good. Uh, for someone who's watching this, maybe mm -hmm. probably a young person who wants to get into mm -hmm. business may be in uh, different other industries and they have this particular idea mm -hmm. and they just want to implement it. Mm -hmm. But they're th also thinking in the aspect of, I want to get into this for the money, you mm -hmm. know, I want to mm -hmm. bag real quick, mm -hmm. especially for the micro generation. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice and on how you curbed that challenge of not uh, having uh, captured the proper modeling of your business, mm -hmm. the whole structure on it? Um... My advice is just start and follow through. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a, everybody wants to start something, but, and we have this glamorous um, perspective of entrepreneurship, but it's the things that go on in the background, the boring stuff, writing proposals, um, filling those spreadsheets on your finances. Which majority never go exactly. through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that is where the real work is. Mm -hmm. That is where the real work is. Um, so for, for, for somebody who wants to start a, a, a business and stuff, and stuff like that, start and follow through, mm -hmm. hoping and praying that that is something that they really are passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if you're passionate about something mm -hmm. then, uh, and you're disciplined, then mm -hmm. you most definitely you'll persist towards your breakthrough. Right? Exactly, exactly. Great. So that's our journey. All right, so let's get into Creole's uh, holdings. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys do in details? In detail. And please, I just uh, picture like you're talking to a three-year-old <laughs> person here. <laughs> sour, sour. <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, we help organizations, okay. businesses, and homeowners reduce mm -hmm. their energy costs. So this way, they are able to increase their profitability, reduce the operational costs, and still protect the environment. Um, I hope you understand the, I mean, the interaction between energy and the environment. Okay. Yeah. So for example, uh, if you're using diesel generators to generate our electricity, it means that there's more pollution from the diesel. Air pollution. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, the good thing about our country now, a lot of our sources are renewable, but at the same time, uh, energy is, also, is, not, is also not becoming cheap for us. So there is the aspect of the environment, there is also the aspect of the finance, and there are there's so many benefits mm -hmm. towards um, energy optimization. So these opti optimization services basically include um, energy auditing, where we investigate areas of energy waste in your environment, and then uh, we upsell you on uh, the energy management service packages, which are basically four. Uh, there's a business package, an economy package, a premium package, and a custom package. Mm -hmm. and, all, and finally, we help you implement the energy conservation measures mm -hmm. uh, and track the savings for you. Okay. And we also train you on how to be energy conservative. So basically, how we are able to differentiate ourselves from the rest is we are very human-centered and we are cost-effective. Um, when I say cost-effective, I don't mean cheap. <laughs> I mean that we are able to manage your finance or how you finance those energy conservation uh, measures. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yep. so probably take us briefly mm -hmm. on your packages that you've mentioned, the four different packages, just briefly. Okay, so we have an economy package. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we are very human-centered and cost-effective. So the economy package is our base package, whereby it's very uh, labor-intensive. Right. So we attach an energy engineer your organization 
who helps you track and maintain records of uh, your energy cons uh, consumption. Then we have a business package, uh, which, which is the one that we highly recommend for our clients to take. It involves a lot of um, equipment for monitoring, okay. um, real-time uh, monitoring equipment, whereby you can even get information about your energy consumption from your phone. Mm -hmm. Um, we leverage on technology like IoT, the Internet of Things, so that we can take all those measurements. And then we have a premium package. So um, uh, if you're looking to get an ISO certification, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, like there's ISO 9001 for quality management, but there's also another one for energy management, ISO 50001, you want to be recognized globally as a sustainable business, mm -hmm. that uh, your business has a very little carbon footprint we offer you the, the premium package. But the, the final one now, the custom package, is whereby some features of different packages you've already implemented, okay. but there are some you have not. So we All go right. into a co-creation process, you tick out the features that you want in your package, and then uh, from there we can generate a quotation for you on how uh, we can build on that package. All yeah. right. Are these services just based on business owners, so uh, you guys can help our people back at home? So, actually, it's during this COVID-19 that we've started really focusing on uh, homeowners. Yes. Uh, before, we were focusing a lot on, on, on businesses and organizations. Actually, mainly, we were focusing on uh, uh, the agricultural industry and uh, the hotel industry. But uh, the agricultural industry, specifically flower farmers. What about manufacturing? Um, we had, we had, were not going into that area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We felt like um, the hospitality industry and uh, the, flower, the flower industry was quite underserved. Okay. Uh, and also that is where my, most of my experience was. Your initials. So. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's look at, uh, I'd like to find out how does your day look like, just mm -hmm. to have a glimpse of uh, uh, your working day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I do is check on uh, the reports, okay. energy management reports. Mm -hmm. Um, whereby I'm able now to analyze our clients' consumption on a daily basis and send them the reports. If there are any anomalies, we note them down and then we follow up with the client. Because um, leveraging on the, that technology, the IoT, has really reduced, and that is basically comes with our business package, reduces our involvement with the clients. So we can have a client in Eldoret, Mombasa, and we're here in Nairobi, knowing how much they're consuming. And since we are very collaborative, like I said, human-centered, we really collaborate with our clients' um, staff, basically their technicians, their maintenance engineers, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We give them these reports. Then after that, check our finances, the books and everything. And then, um, right, like right now, we've been really working in the background to now um, take our business from uh, emails, mm -hmm. just emails and phone calls to our serious online presence mm -hmm. through social media, um, a, a functional website and all that. Okay. Uh, basically, that's what we've been working on the past few months. All right. Yeah. So uh, I would like to find out the number or probably you can just mention the mm -hmm. number of uh, the team mm -hmm. from Creos Holding and how are you guys holding up during this time of COVID-19? Uh, so Starting out in 2020, we were going through a new transition now. Uh, we had even shifted our offices from, from Westlands to Kenyatta University, and we're looking to expand. So before, we were, we were, were four full-time employees and two part-time employees. But at the moment, we've reduced to two. Okay. Yeah, uh, basically because uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the roles that some of our staff had taken, we have now taken them up. Yeah. So that basically means uh, our business development uh, and engineering, those are the only things that are, st are still structured in the company at the moment, okay. uh, being run by the two of us. But before we were looking at other functions like HR, finance, uh, in fact, we even delegated the business development roles so that now we can work on um, part, uh, greater partnerships. We're even working on a, on a different product so that uh, at least we, we can diversify our offerings. Right. Yeah, but 
come mid March when we were hit, went home, had after after three months, let one person go. Then the next month now in, in July, the the final person left. Uh, so the people that are working with us right now, yes, I think it's it's just been tough. Yeah, it's I been believe COVID nineteen has hit uh, yes. really hard Even on all industries. Yep. It's, it's, yeah, it's just all rounded, and we are just adapting to the new to the new norm. New normal. Yes. So let's look at prior to COVID nineteen. Mm. Is this a lucrative business, or does it take way too long to make money? You know, the, at the end, <laughs> and the, at the end of it all, uh -huh. it's all about you just uh, uh, making profits. So I think it's a very lucrative business. I would okay. advise, I think we are underserved here in Kenya. And uh, looking even at Why our- Why do you think that? Um, there are about less than 100 auditors, or uh, they are about in the country. Okay. But the, the number of people that need to be served by law are about, and these are just the businesses, are about uh, 3,000 to 4,000. Okay. So, if you look at the number of service providers versus the industry, uh, I think we are underserved. Mm -hmm. Number two is the jobs that, that come afterwards. Because now, now that's just auditing, but now there are jobs that come afterwards. So you want to implement, say, an efficient lighting, you want to implement solar, you want to implement biogas, you want to implement uh, efficient uh, equipment. There is where the real money is. And from, from, from our research, we believe that it's an industry that can generate around 2 billion shillings annually in revenue. So that's 2 billion for all of us. Wow. But at the same time, uh, we are looking at savings of about almost a billion shillings from just implementing those measures. So not only do we uh, reduce our costs, but we also show initiative to the region, to the continent and to the world that we are actually focused on sustainability. Yeah. So there is a lot going on in that area. Wow. Mm. Back in 20, back in 2018, mm -hmm. the government uh, seek to tap coal power mm -hmm. uh, in Lamu. Mm -hmm. And we, the, the, the Lamu people were so much against it. Mm -hmm. And I would like to find out, they talk to us about the quality of power mm -hmm. And uh, how, how safe is, the, is coal when it comes to just, uh, you know, how safe is it and okay. is it clean? <laughs> There's a statement I've been hearing recently, there's nothing like clean coal, mm -hmm. but I believe technology is really helping us achieve that. Um, for me, I'm all about um, sustainable energy, clean energy. Okay. So, I think as a country, we, have, we are really moving forward. We are really moving forward uh, towards achieving that because right now I think our energy mix is around mm -hmm. almost 90% renewable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we have geothermal, we have uh, wind, we have hydro, which has been there for a very long time. So the quality in terms of um, environmental impact is, is, is quite good. Mm -hmm. The problem now comes with the cost. Okay. Yeah, um, everybody thinks that since renewable energy is free energy, free energy. Yes. Uh, You'll tell us why you're putting it in quotes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, everybody thinks that this is free energy, our electricity should be cheap. Mm -hmm. But we fail to remember that there's a lot of investment that has gone into it. And one way or the other, that investment has to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the cost of electricity should be coming down sooner. But from, from a profit point of view, it's not coming down anytime soon. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the cost of energy in the country, especially for manufacturers, mm -hmm. is quite very high. Mm -hmm. How can we tame the prices? So for starters, mm -hmm. um, actually the new Energy Act 2019, it's giving a lot of uh, um, freedom for people to actually generate their own energy sources. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there's even uh, one of the most exciting things about that Energy Act for me was something called um, net metering whereby you here, Michelle, uh, I'm not even considering that you're a manufacturer. Just a, in fact, for manufacturers, it's way cheaper 
the electricity costs are way cheaper than for you, a domestic users. Okay. You find out uh, big, big manufacturers are doing, say, 15 shillings per unit. But you, in your house, you're doing around 25 shillings. That's a very huge exactly. difference. Yeah, yeah. But and why is that? Um, economies of scale. So uh, since they're they are going to be consuming more, they're sold for cheaper. But since you, you're using less, um, and we have to like, s somehow they have to levelize the field, uh, you're, you're, you're charged more. So with this new energy act, uh, I was talking about something called net metering. You're here, you have a solar panel in your house. Of course, nobody's in your house right now. So you'll find out probably, now what is a solar panel doing? And I'm not even using that electricity, even if I had a battery. Mm -hmm. But with, that, with this new law, uh, when you're here, you're able to sell back power to the grid and maybe even the utility provider with Kenya power. So at the end of the month, instead of you getting a bill, you, 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 you get a bill and you also issue a bill, then you do the difference and then whoever has charged or whoever has used more electricity than the other mm -hmm. is the one who gets paid. So if, you're, if your house generates more electricity than you consume, you're actually paid for it. Uh, regulations are still being uh, developed around that. It's something that um, industry players have been really fighting for and it was culminated in the Energy Act 2019. Mm -hmm. So there are great, great opportunities out there for energy cost reduction for both manufacturers and uh, uh, domestic users. Okay, mm. so what does uh, Creos Holding mm -hmm. uh, do to cut down the cost of energy? If we come to you, mm -hmm. probably as a business owner, mm -hmm. and how are you guys going to help us out when it comes to cutting your cost on energy? So, um, we first of all try to understand you. Because uh, there, there are five, five steps of, of, of uh, our human-centered approach. We come, we empathize with you. What is your major frustration? Is it the cost of electricity? Is it uh, compliance? Is it um, sustainability? So whichever the case, we know how far we are going to go with you. So if your case is cost, and uh, most people, that's where they are really pained at, um, we come and tell you, OK, can we conduct an energy audit for your facility? We come and investigate areas of energy waste. Um, then we measure, and then we recommend energy conservation measures in a report. We tell you that. Um, uh, you're, wast uh, you're wasting around 200,000 shillings from not doing one, two, three. So can take a case study of say, let's say even a room like this. Okay. A room like this, I'll come and tell you, is this lighting enough? Because everybody has their own uh, oh, standards. For mm -hmm. example, a studio has its own st standard for lighting. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll ask you, um, do you think the lighting is enough? If it's enough, okay, then we start taking uh, measurements of the technology you're using for lighting. Okay. So we'll tell you, um, do you need the heat from the light? If you say no, you just need the light, then we tell you there's a lot of heat being generated by this type of light, use this other type of light. It's going to save you this number of electricity per month. So if you invest, uh, say, 20,000 shillings, mm -hmm. you're going to return your money in, say, a year or two, probably, depending on the measure. Some measures are even instant, just like that. Okay. Uh, measures like... Um, uh, from from my brief uh, stay and on this set, mm -hmm. I n noticed that some some bulbs are off. Okay. Yeah. So having some bulbs off, something called delamping, uh, it's a good measure and costs you nothing to do that. Right. Yes. So <laughs> I feel so like things. I'm in a classroom right now. So <laughs> much <laughs> being informed. Yep. All right. So what are some of the tips that we can probably use back at home for the guys who are watching? And okay. uh, we, we're actually losing too much of the energy, uh, quite expensive when mm -hmm. it comes to the cost. Mm -hmm. What are a couple of tips you can probably give us? Mm, number one is just basic energy conservation. So energy conservation is quite cheap. Basically, that means now you are not wasting. You're not being wasteful. So you're moving from the kitchen to the living room to the bedroom and you're going leaving lights on. Number one, uh, that is not a good practice. It has to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. Behavior change, that is number one. Number two is start learning about now the, the different technologies that exist. So, um, for example, if your bulb burns out, All right. don't send your son or daughter with 40 bob to go and bring you a uh, bulb. Why? Why not? Because it's that cheap, mm -hmm. yes, but the, the kind of um, cost it's going to 
uh, run into your, po the, into your pocket, it's not worth it, to be honest. Because that bulb is going to burn out in very few hours of use. And then number two, it will have costed you a lot of money to have it uh, light your space. Because okay. it consumes more I energy. Get you. Yep, yep. Cheap is expensive. Yes, after yes, all. yes. Oh, yeah. And then uh, number three is always buy energy efficient equipment. There are basic labels uh, that uh, denote energy efficient equipment. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So, guys, you've heard all about energy conservation and how you can save a couple of uh, a couple of money. Uh, from yep. just high co uh, costing uh, too much wastage of energy. I would like to find out mm -hmm. a successful story mm -hmm. whereby you were working with a particular client mm -hmm. and they ended up saving mm -hmm. way too much and they didn't expect that actually uh, getting into, you know, seeking help mm -hmm. on ways to just uh, save on energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would like to hear that story. So uh, there's a client um, who back in 2016 their average bill was about 3 million shillings every month. But as we speak today, um, let me even just not speak of today, let me speak of January pre-COVID. Uh, their bill was as low as 1.8 million. 1.8 million from 3 million? From 3 million, yes. Wow. From 1.8 million. Right now, they're doing about, I think, a million shillings. Okay. Uh, but it's because of the reduced activity due to COVID. But we still want to go further. There's, there, there's a major opportunity. I don't know whether this is a very good platform for me to um, air out this opportunity for anyone who'd want to chip in. Okay. Yeah, um, there's an opportunity to invest in such a kind of project for solar. Absolutely. This is the right opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's an opportunity to invest in uh, a, a solar project okay. that is bound to make at least uh, 300,000 to 600,000 in terms of savings mm -hmm. yeah so if you want to chip in into that you can reach us at creosltd.com uh, check our social media pages creos kenya facebook twitter uh, Instagram, that's where, and LinkedIn also, we're very active there. Okay, yep. guys, you've heard it, yeah? So what is, what's the vision of the company? Probably, let's say, five, ten years down the road. Okay. Um, for us, we are guided by the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, number seven to be exact, that is access to clean and affordable energy mm -hmm. to all. Mm -hmm. So we want you, Michelle, to enjoy the benefits of the region that you live in. This region is rich in renewable energy sources. This region is rich in innovation and stuff like that. We want you to access all that. That, that, is our, that is our vision. For you to be able to use energy affordably and cleanly. All right, thank you very much, yep. Denise, for thank creating time to be with us. Probably could give out, uh, give out your social media handles again so that people can reach out to you okay. and get that investment opportunity. So for me, uh, I'm, I'm Denise Karioki on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, on Twitter. On Twitter, I'm Denise Karioki, like karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for our company, Creos Kenya, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Yes. All right. Check there. out our website. Mm -hmm. We have great content for energy conservation. Yes. Okay. So there you have it. Dennis Karaoke, founder of Cruise Holding LTD, matters pertaining energy optimization in business. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right. We'll go back to uh, enjoying good music and we'll be right back with another interview. <laughs>